Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday Night Live. Um, I should be back now. Uh, I was streaming for about three minutes uh, to myself. Hopefully I'm there now. If somebody will let me know over on TikTok, if I am um, up on YouTube, let's see. I feel like something is not working. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. I see a hello. Okay, so today we are going to be going over this really cool book called Pamela Coleman Smith, The Untold Story. Yay, I'm here. Thanks, Natasha. Great to see you guys. So what I was saying is that we've been doing this tarot series and one of the cool things that is coming up, this is new to me. So a lot of the information that we're going to be digging into today is also going to be my first time seeing it. So I figured we'd do something fun for this part of the tarot series. And since we're talking about the major arcana versus minor arcana, remember, we've talked about that before. So the major arcana, the major arcana are going to be major life events in your life story. You know, these are your hero's journey. But then our minor arcana is your day-to-day -day life. So if you have a lot of minor arcana cards coming up in your readings, this is more about your immediate situation right now. That's here, today, this week, this month. Um, sometimes when you're pulling major arcana cards it can pertain to your situation today but it also can pertain to your situation that is unfolding over the next five years so um as we know we have been working off of the rider weight deck or which has been renamed to the smith weight deck by some and this is after pamela coleman smith so um my friend marcella who she published these books actually she published some decks actually gave me this book this weekend she's moving so she was in the process of downsizing some stuff look at this encyclopedia of a book about pamela coleman smith the untold story so if you guys weren't aware the minor arcana is it was always there but in the older tarot decks before the rider weight most of them were just um i wish i had a picture here maybe i do most of them were just like along these lines where you would just like okay if it was seven of swords it would just be seven swords on that card so this is how it used to be then pamela coleman smith she was the only woman that was a part of this basically secret society, secret organization. It was called um, Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and it was an all men's group like these things typically were. However, Pamela Coleman Smith was one of the only women to actually be a part of this group. And she's the one who came up with all the ideas for all of these cards. So when we're going through all of these minor arcana cards, remember how we've been talking about how every single card has a whole entire story, has the archetype, has the symbolism, the numerology behind it, the symbology, every single thing that we've talked about, like how all of these different things from seeing trees, from the colors, Every single thing, clouds mean something, shadows mean something, the moon means something, the mountains mean something, the water means something. Everything in each of these cards has so much meaning, and we can thank Pamela Coleman Smith for all of that. So I wanted to do something a little different today because um, I just got this book over the weekend. I haven't had a chance to really explore it much. Oh, hello, welcome. So I haven't got a chance to explore it much. However, um, we're going to do a little bit of exploring it today. So let's take a look. I'm going to put on my second camera. If you're watching over on TikTok, um, you might want to switch to YouTube because I'm going to be having a second camera um, to show the book. So this is the untold story. So you guys that don't might not know much about Pamela Coleman Smith, aside from her being one of the only women that was really in this industry, um, there was also a lot of rumors about her being Jamaican. Now, I've heard mixed things. In, when you look her up, it'll say that her mother was British and her father was Jamaican. And as we know, that is actually something that is super common. It's not unbelievable. Um, however, 
over the years, I have also come across information that she wasn't actually Jamaican. She just lived in Jamaica and loved their culture and implemented a lot from their culture. So I don't know for sure if she had any Jamaican in her or if she just loved Jamaica and lived there. And it's pretty crazy. In the early parts of this book, um, we talk about her early life. And that's not going to be too interesting for us here today because we're talking about the tarot. Um, so, but a lot of her early life was coming back and forth. I honestly can't believe how in her time, the late 1800s, she was traveling from New York to London to Jamaica regularly all the time. Like, wow. I don't know how she does it. We can't even do it today. Um, someone said, who? We are talking about Pamela Coleman Smith, the artist who, who did the art for the tarot deck, for the Rider Waite tarot deck. Now, it's also crazy. And now we're going to take, uh, take a look into this book. But what I also heard, and I don't know if this is true, maybe we'll find out right now, that this other popular tarot deck, so we know the Rider Waite deck is like the number one deck. There's another deck that used to be very popular. It's out of print now. It's called the Nap Hall deck. Nap Hall tarot deck also came from the same secret society. So this Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn that had Pamela Coleman Smith and A.E. Waite also had these other members, one of which was Manly P. Hall, who was part of the Knapp Hall tarot deck. So this was really cool. I don't have this confirmed. Maybe we'll get it confirmed in the book right now that she also did artwork for this other tarot deck, which came out 19 years later. So let's take a look. Let's see what kind of fun stuff we're going to see in here. And there's like really cool stuff in this book. Like this is like a drawing of her. We have a lot of like her early life stuff, her life in Jamaica. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff, but we want to get to the tarot stuff because that's what we're talking about here. So let's see. Okay, look, we're already starting to get into some of the cool stuff here. Okay, so it seems like A.E. Waite was potentially going by a different name at the time and that he was doing different, um, let's see, different work and she was doing the cover art. That's kind of how this began. Let's get to the actual stuff about the tarot, though, because I want to show you guys there's a lot of cool... Um, Let's see, page 74. And I'm going to flip through here, too, so, like, you guys can see, like, um, some of her other work. These are different things that she had published. I really love this style of artwork. Um, now, here's another deck that I have. This one is called Oracle of the Radiant Sun. I really like this deck also. And this is not a tarot deck. It's an oracle, as the name says. But it uses a similar type of art, and I love this type of artwork. Like, look, speculation, secrets. This has, like, really beautiful artwork. So it's kind of like a similar style. Um, I forgot what this style of art is called. I think it's Nouveau Art. No, Nouveau. Like the new art. Okay, let's find... Oh, wow, this looks like the, the teacher from the Black Lagoon, right? Okay. 350, we'll get there. We're making our way. All right, here we go. Okay, so this chapter starts off with a quote from Pamela Coleman Smith. All arts are branches of one tree. This chapter explores some of the symbolism in the Rider Waite tarot deck and the ways Pamela Coleman Smith drew inspiration from her own life, beliefs, and interests friends and interests at the time she created the cards. There are two groups of cards in the tarot. 
Um, the 22 trump cards, which is also called the Major Arcana, we went over that in the first part of this tarot series, why they used to be called the trump cards, and that most likely the Trump family renamed themselves based off of those trump cards, because um, that's what they say when you trump something, right? <clears throat> they are, um, these cards, they date back to the 15th century Renaissance and they were used as card games. So just some stuff without going into everything that's here, because it seems like a lot of what's starting off in this chapter is things we've already gone over. Um, so what you guys might remember is that this was the original tarot decks were not for divination. They were actually playing cards. Now this is before the writer wait, because the Rider Waite deck was inspired by previous playing card decks. And those trump cards were kind of like, you know, um, you know, like a, a super card, you know, that you could. And then, you know, then we have the court cards as well, just like playing cards, right? So what I've actually heard, I don't know if we're going to see it pop up in this book, or um, I do have another book that talks about it by Rebecca Pollock, I believe her name is. She talks about how A.E. Waite, the creator of this deck, who did the writing for it, where Pamela Coleman did the art, he never wanted this to be used for divina divination, allegedly allegedly he did not want this to be used for future telling for divination for stuff like that i don't know if that's true i know that they were part of this hermetic order and that they did use divination so i don't know if that's 100 percent true but i've heard that from a couple sources and um he actually didn't appreciate people using it this way now one of the other things that i've heard is there's no real time frame that they can specify when these cards started to be used for divination instead of playing. Now, I personally believe that he said he didn't want them used for divination, but we know what you were about with your hermetic order of the golden dawn. We knew what you meant by that. But, um, so maybe he said that because he didn't want regular people playing with them, or maybe he genuinely um, was just about the art form of it. I don't know. However, these cards when they transitioned from being playing cards into um divination tools there's no specific origin however it's believed it's rumored that it might come from like romani people the gypsy people that they are probably the people who started to have it be used for divination um because as you know the story with gypsy which i know is like you know people don't like that term anymore uh my grandma was gypsy so it is a term that i was used to using my whole life until like a year ago people said you can't anymore but um we don't mean it in the slur way we mean it in literally the historical way this is why it's actually if you guys don't know why it's like sometimes if you see like the hippie style is called like boho or bohemian that bohemian stuff comes from actually bohemia which used to be the czech republic before the czech republic so the original czech empire or whatever it was i don't know if i would say empire but the original king of what became czech was actually bohemia and these gypsy people these romani people who were migrating in caravans and they were doing divination and performance and art and you know we're kind of getting a bad reputation along the way and basically they had gotten such a bad reputation from you know little trickster things that they had done along the way and all of these different cities and towns across europe that everyone was trying to ban them from coming in so them being the clever little devils that they are um they decided that they were going to forge a letter from the king and i don't know if you guys have ever heard this story from a thing but they forged a letter from the king of bohemia and it said these are my people treat them as you would treat me and they signed it like king of bohemia whatever and then they came to each town with this paper basically saying look the king of bohemia says we're his people we are the bohemians and you must treat us as you would treat the king 
And it was a forged letter, but they made it pretty far before anyone got back to the king that they were using a forged letter. So this is where this kind of bohemian gypsy type of phrase comes from. And this type of caravan type of mystical psychic nature kind of all molded into each other. And it's believed from stuff I've researched that that could be where it started to shift into being used for a divination tool. Because as we know, in different cultures, they read um, coffee. Greek people and Turkish people both read coffee. Some people read tea leaves. Some people read palms. Some people read face reading, like in, in Chinese medicine. So all of these different things, these regular things being used for divination is always happening in all different places. So it could have been a collective effort in how these things started to be used for divin divination. So Wait, A.E. Wait, he did a um, guide on what these minor arcana cards were going to be. And then she's the one who really took the reins and brought those things to life. Let's see. It says, why did they come together to create this deck? Let's see what it says. I, I wish I would have had time to look through this book before coming here, but I have my lecture coming up this weekend, so I have to manage my time. So we're doing our research together here today. Oh, yes. Art Novo. What's the Hermetic Order deck called? So this original Rider Waite deck comes from the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. And then there's a second deck that came out 19 years later, which was also from the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and that's called Knapp Hall Tarot Deck. So K-N-A-P-P, -P, Hall, as in Manly P. Hall. And that's where this book basically is coming from. Okay, so why did they make this deck? So in 1901, just after Pamela said she had her first vision to music, she joined London's Isis Urana Temple of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a secret group devoted to the practice of magic, occultism, religious studies, and mysticism. Disagreements among members led to a schism in 1903. Those interested in magic and occultism followed William Butler Yeats to his branch, while Pamela and others interested in Judeo-Christian mysticism went with author Arthur Waite. As Waite came to know Pamela better, he realized she had mystic and visionary qualities. Not only did he regard her as a psychic, but he was pleased that she already knew something of tarot. She was the perfect person to create the rectified tarot deck, that is, one based on Judeo-Christian mysteries rather than occult magic. Waite had been Catholic but left the church while Pamela converted to Catholicism a little over a year after she drew the tarot. I'm telling you, this book is like legit. Like there is so many things. So this book for anyone coming in now, this book is called Pam Pamela Coleman Smith, The Untold Story. And look at the thickness of this encyclopedia of everything about her life. Like literally, if you come to the back, they have her birth certificates, her death certificates. They have letters from like, they have immigration stuff. They have stuff from her grave. Um, they have journals. Like this book is like an encyclopedia of Pamela Coleman Smith. And I just got it as a gift the other day from my friend. So I've only had a little bit to glim glimpse through it. But look at that. Pamela Coleman Smith converted to Catholicism after creating the deck. Why am I just hearing this for the first time right now with you guys? Why? Okay. As Waite said, this is a quote from Waite. Yes, this is what I'm saying. Wait, wait, wait. They converted to Christianity after drawing the art of the deck. Crazy. Um, okay, so Waite said, I have interested a very skillful and original artist in the proposed design, a set of tarot cards, Miss Pamela Coleman Smith. In addition to her obvious gifts, has some knowledge of tarot values. She has lent a sympathetic ear to my proposal to rectify the symbolism by reference to channels of knowledge which are not in the open day, and we have had help from one who is deeply versed in the subject. 
The result is a marriage of art and symbolism, a true tarot, one of its aspects. A true tarot under one of its aspects. Okay. Much of Waite's, Waite's writing is obscure, often purposely misleading, perhaps to protect the public from the ideas that Waite found dangerous. An attitude recalling the Greek philosopher Pythagoras and his secret Pythagorean brotherhood. The pa and Pamela, because she kept her golden dawn vow of secrecy, never discussed anything possible anything about possible meanings in her cards. Without evidence to the contrary, we can surmise whatever other ideas Pamela may have brought to her interpretation of the images, her views on tarot were essentially compatible with weights. Those ideas were mystical to the extent that mysticism can be expressed in word or pictures. For weight, the tarot was a vessel for meaning with both obvious and esoteric aspects. Less attention to be paid to the possibility that Pamela Coleman Smith may have placed her own hidden meanings and symbols into the cards. We cannot know today that how much of Waite's thinking about the tarot's hidden aspects he shared with Pamela, nor which aspects of her ideas about the images she shared with him. Clearly, they were sympathetic, though clearly they were sympathetic, okay, though as tarot scholar Gertrude Moakley wrote in 1959, this set of mystical tarot cards seemed at, a time, at the time a mere trifle to both of them compared with their more ambitious projects. Yet their tarot is one of the few published works by either of them that has remained almost continuously in print for 50 years. That was in 1959. She was blown away how it was still in print for 50 years. Look at us, 100 years. This tarot deck is over 100 years old. This artwork is over 100 years old, and it is still in constant print. Imagine that, right? Toward the end of his life, Waite did come to realize that all of his monumental works, all of his multi multinduous activities, and little tarot and this little tarot was one of the most fruitful. Yet at the time he was doing the actual work, it was a little more than a delightful avocation. How, hop how often this happens, the little thing that is just tossed off and turns out to be the epitome of all the author stood for, still alive and fresh when the rest of his works have begun to smell of dried lavender. And when a brilliant man and woman like Ray Waite and Pamela Smith work together, his masculinity and her femininity are sometimes flint to steel, flint and steel to produce new brilliance. Wow. Okay. So look how interesting that is. Um, apparently, Wait was not high sharing a lot of information with Pamela, and Pamela might have not been sharing a lot of information with uh, Arthur Wait. Let's see if there's anything here that's going to stick out and be super interesting to us. This is about a lot of her other work around that time she also went to school at the pratt institute if you guys are into art you might be familiar with that okay the tarot drawings what does it have to say about the tarot drawings someone said maybe something happened through tarot and she ran to the church for protection it's possible um but what's interesting is that they have like these oaths of secrecy and oaths of silence, you know, with what they know. So I guess we'll never really be able to know what happened. Okay, tarot drawings. The Five of Pentacles is a good example of how Pamela drew upon her own personal experiences in creating the Rider Waite tarot. Other influences such as her background in storytelling, theater, and her burgeoning burgeoning interest in Catholicism became apparent in the card's details. In her tarot drawings, Pamela incorporated several intriguing types of symbolic changes that have their roots in her early life and work, the use of androgynous figures and gender role reversals in some cards, including several trump cards. The insertion of portraits of her feminist and suffragist friends into the cards and the development of symbolism in cards that suggests christian particularly catholic ideas one of these devices were new but were not common at the time 
One need only glance, for instance, at the androgynous figure in her Ten of Swords to see how dramatic and original her designs are and how close they are to dreamlike spirit of her visionary and musical paintings. Ideas from both the theater and her art background are used as devices to pull the viewer into the world of the card and its illustrations. This device is called engagement or engaging the viewer, and there are various ways it works in Pamela's cards. The most obvious way is to present viewers with an extremely dramatic story of, web of which neither the beginning nor ending is known. Whoa, guys, look at that. Okay, let's pull one of these um, minor cards and take a look at that, right? Okay, let's look at the Ten of Cups. So they said that because of her background in theater and storytelling, that she would use storytelling in these pictures and that what makes these engaging this makes these engaging to the viewer is because it's showing a story without the beginning or the end. We're just stepping into the story. Now, look at this. We don't know what happened to this family before, and we don't know what's happening to them next, but we know right now where they are, what they're feeling. Wow. Wow. That, look at this. Another great example. We don't know why these women are celebrating and we don't know where they're going to after this, but we're having this middle of the story being so blatantly put out there that this is why these cards are so engaging. This is why the storytelling is so strong in these cards. This is why we know that this card is about leaving and walking away. We don't know why he's leaving. We don't know what he's leaving and we don't know what he where he's going to. Wow. Oof. That's why I love reading stuff like this. I'm so grateful that my friend gave me this book. Okay. Um, okay, so then they use the example of the Ten of Swords. Um, how did this person end up like this? As we know, you can see here, how did this person end up like this? Nobody knows. Okay. Um, short hair and masculine clothing were worn by many of Pamela's feminist and suffragist friends, including the well-known actors like Edie Craig and Cicely Hamilton. In the Ten of Swords, the figure is covered from the waist down, so the clothing makes little difference. Further, the viewer does not see the figure's face, which makes it easier for both men and women to imagine themselves in the card, a major factor in engaging the viewer. In the figure... Is the figure as dead as it appears? Waite says in the pictorial key of the tarot that while it suggests pain, affliction, tears, sadness, desolation, it is not especially a card of violent death. That's talking about the Ten of Swords, even though it looks like a very violent death. Um, one very close examination reveals why Waite makes this statement. Look at the figure's right hand it makes a gesture in which the third finger and the pinky both curve down to meet the thumb while the index finger oh, okay like this oh this like the symbol that is on okay so they're showing us here that their hand the hand on the ten of swords is making this symbol as we know we see this symbol as above so below right in the um, magician in the devil card, in the hierophant card, we see this same symbol. Oh, same as the gesture on the hierophant, it is not identical. Okay, it's not identical. It's similar. The hierophant's third pinky, third and pinky fingers are bent straight and do not touch the thumb. The hand gesture in the ten of swords is significant and indicates that the body is not dead because the muscles the muscles are not relaxed. Wow. They're really getting in depth here. They're really getting in depth here. Okay. Let's skip around. Let's see what else is interesting. So that's also something that's really cool that is coming out here in this book. Um saying that a lot of the women that Pamela depicted were actually people that she knew that was a part of the women's suffrage movement even though the timing is interesting this came out in what 1910 and what women got the right to vote in 1920 um doesn't mean there wasn't a movement going on at that time i'm just saying i'm just saying but then that's very interesting like look at this like she said that that she would kind of portray 
the feminine characters with short hair and things to kind of show um, that these were modeled off of some of her friends, which is pretty cool. Okay, Joan of Arc stuff. Let's see what else is cool in here that we are coming across. Okay, so Pamela drew inspiration for the tarot deck from the world on world of the stage from her personal friendships and often these realms overlapped. There are several instances of Pamela inserting portraits of her friends into the deck. Ellen Terry shows up in the cards, generally in the sort of a womanly role that she played in theater. We see a young Ellen Terry in the face of the Queen of Wands whose openness of expression and prominent chin resemble Terry's appearance. For instance, in the photo, the actor, she's as Ophelia from um, Hamlet, I guess. Um, an older, wealthy Ellen Terry appears on the Nine of Pentacles with her estate behind her. Whoa, you guys. This is cool. Like I said, I'm finding out all this stuff with you guys today because I've never seen a lot of this stuff online. I've And most of the stuff I've never heard of that is coming up, like these little things that are popping up. So look here, they're telling us that the Queen of Wands and the Nine of Pentacles are both the actress Ellen Kel Ellen Terry. Ellen Terry. How cool is that? Like, these are such cool little facts and little tidbits. Okay. Um, in the Nine of Pentacles, Waite specifically mentions the grape motif, which has long multifaceted history as a Christian symbol of sacrifice and redemption. One of the themes of Ellen Terry's personal mythology was her self-sacrifice for both her children, Gordon and Craig Edith, and for the greater good of the theater community. She always called herself a mere, merely a useful actor. There's a hint of deferred power in the image of the bird she holds in the Nine of Pentacles card. Ah, uh, okay. Wait mentioned simply a bird, but Pamela represented a hooded falcon, a symbol of explosive power barely restrained. While Ellen supported the suffrage movement, she never managed to transcend Victorian gender limitations in her career. One might interrupt the falcon on her wrist as an audacious daughter, as her audacious daughter, Edie Craig, a powerful personality who progressed prescriptive Prescriptive gender roles in many ways. This interpretation is reinforced by the similarity in the pose between the Nine of Pentacles and Pamela's suffrage poster, A Bird in the Hand. Okay, so this right here next to it was a poster that she made for women's suffrage. And then look, it's like very similar and this woman was holding the bird. And then, so then this is what they're saying is that basically Arthur Waite came up with a lot of this stuff and was basically like... Um, Someone said, you need to know what this book is called. This book is called Pamela Coleman Smith, The Untold Story. And it's like a thick encyclopedia of all the unknown things about Pamela Coleman Smith's life. Um, way beyond tarot. There's only, there's a lot about tarot on here, but there's a lot about her other work. Because as we said earlier from one of those quotes that someone had, that basically between Arthur Waite and Pamela Coleman, this was like kind of their throwaway little side project and all of the other things that they did at the time were so much more popular. Um, obviously what has stood the test of time is this project. Um, but how cool is that to kind of know some of these things? And then like, literally these are like the sources is insane. Okay. Innovative tarot, the number one legacy of Sarah, uh, not Sarah, sorry, <laughs> Pamela Coleman Smith. Um, resides in the millions of people around the world who are over the past over the past 100 years that have drawn have been drawn to and continue to draw inspiration from her tarot deck in addition to those who 
those use those cards as a tool to impart direction and meaning in their own lives and in the lives of others. There exists a population of artists, writers, and others creatives who use her storytelling of tarot images as both inspiration and model when creating their own decks, their own art, films, poetry, as well as fiction and nonfiction books, as well as YouTube channels and TikTok lives, right? Um, all of these people studying tarot can be viewed as Pamela's legacy students, even those who may not be aware of Pamela Coleman Smith as the artist. The deck has very has vicari variously been known as simply tarot cards, the Rider Waite cards, and then the Smith Waite, I mean the Rider Waite tarot deck after the publisher and the conceptualizer. In 2009, publication of the Cam Pamela Coleman Smith commemorative set of U.S. games, uh, her grateful fans welcomed the inclusion of Smith's name into the deck's title, where they were also gifted with a set of postcards from her non-tarot works in the collection of Stuart Kaplan, founder of U.S. games. Oh, that's crazy, because Stuart Kaplan wrote this book. Interesting. Okay. Let's see what else is here, what else is fun, and then we can... Suffrage movement lasted a long time, longer than people realize. Ooh, okay, 1910s was when they first had some stuff, but some failures. Mmm, yes, the princesses and the court cards got written out. Interesting. Okay. Um... Pamela was credited with not only with making the deck, but also set, but set also commemorated with other artistic output. Okay, uh, 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 let's get to something good here. Okay. Okay, perhaps because of the limited time that Pamela had to create these images, only a few months, she only had a few months to do all of this. Can you believe 78 cards? Okay, the major arcana, rife with details specified by weight, are highly symbolic, symbolic and elegant, but static in the mode of Gothic woodcut decks that preceded them. By contrast, the minor arcana are like an animated storyboard sketches and character studies. They convey, for the most part, mobility and action caught in mid-movement. The core cards, based loosely on the designs by the Golden Dawn founder, William Wynne Westcott, resembled Victorian photo postcards of actors in costumes stiffly posed except for the knights. These postcards may, have well, may well have served as models for some of the details in Pamela's designs, thus the minor arcana cards have a certain liveliness to them and a dynamic sense that's missing from most of the other cards in the deck. In readings, they represent a more mundane and pragmatic aspects of life rather than the spiritual and allegorical doctrines and principles of the major arcana. In his few brief mentions regarding their collaboration, Waite says he chose Pamela, who, he, who had followed him into his rectified order of the Golden Dawn, as she was the most imaginative and abnormally psychic artist who loved ceremonies without understanding their in symbolic importance. That was his quote about her. In an article in the Occult Review in 1909, he explained that his purpose in producing the deck was to rectify the symbolism of the major arcana by reference to channels of knowledge which are not in the open day. Pamela had only been through the first two initiations of the Golden Dawn and would have seen only the two Golden Dawn tarot cards as they are revealed during the initiation ceremonies. Oh, wow, you hear that? So what they're saying right there is that each of the cards, each of the tarot cards would one by one be introduced each level of the order that they went to. So they said that Pamela Coleman Smith had only gone to two levels of this secret society so far. So she had only seen two cards. Well, look, we just answered our question from the beginning of this, because in the beginning, we were wondering, well, what would he want to use these cards for? 
if he didn't want to use them for divination. If he was against these cards being used for divination, what was the purpose? It was obviously not play if it was a part of this hermetic order. Well, now we just see. Um, she had only been through the first two initiations of the Golden Dawn, so would have only seen two Golden Dawn tarot cards as they were revealed during initiation ceremonies. So that was the purpose that they were using them for. They were doing, and now you guys think back to what we were talking about with, um, when we went back to the major arcana stuff, how that follows the hero's journey. So now this makes sense. Look at this. Wow. You guys, I'm telling you this, this live, I'm learning more than you guys are. <laughs> okay. So as we know, the fool's journey, right? So let's say only two cards had been revealed to you by this point. Card one is the fool. Card two is the magician. This is the most, going from the fool to the magician is one of the greatest things that any of us can do in our life. It's the inciting incident of our hero's journey, of the true story of our lives. So that makes wonderful sense why they modeled the cards in that way. Wow, okay, let's keep learning. Let's see what else is in here. It seems that Pamela's inspiration for creating illustrations for the number cards resulted from viewing a photo photographic display of the 15th century Sola Busca Tarot recently arrived at the B British Museum for she directly copied a couple of its images. The appearance, meanings, and methods of the cards were not taught to initiates like Pamela Coleman Smith until after their entrance into the inner order at the sixth initiation. Guys, hold up. Sixth initiation. So it would take six initiations for you to then... Okay. Appearance, meanings, and methods of cards were not taught until the sixth initiation. Well, let's see. What is that? That goes from the fool, wait, the fool to the magician, to the high priestess, empress, emperor, hierophant, to the lovers. Well, if you guys remember all the stuff that we talked about in the previous um, tarot stuff, how interesting is that? Because remember, those are the meet the mentors cards. These are the mentor cards, right? When we're on the hero's journey, the first one is your ordinary life, the fool's card. Your second is your call to action, your call to your destiny. That's the magician card. Then you have your high priestess, which is these feminine aspect it's like a feminine hierophant it's that similar to like in the original cards it was called the popus it was like a female pope then we have the empress which is divine femininity uh fertility growth abundance prosperity all of that stuff then we have the male aspects of that so then we have the hierophant and the emperor so we have two we have two types of feminine and masculine archetypes for each. Isn't that kind of crazy that you would go through those? Those I think are the most important archetypes to me of those. And then it goes to after you have mastered the feminine and the masculine, then you come to the lover's card, which is the last of the meet the mentors. And that's the mentors that are joined between feminine and masculine. And then that's when you can start to progress through the rest of the deck. But I think that's pretty interesting that until you are joined between your feminine and masculine, that's where they say after the sixth initiation, oh, we are learning a lot today, guys. Furthermore, Waite always keeps his vows of secrecy, revealing in his book only what he knew from his other extensive esoteric studies. Oh, Arthur, wait. You wrote a book and you didn't even put your own stuff in it. Okay, um, wait, explained. She had to be spoon fed carefully over the priestess card. Oh, he better not, he better not disrespect our Pamela Coleman Smith, Pixie, by the name, goes by the name Pixie. This is, this is what Arthur Waite had to say about her. She had to be spoon fed carefully over the priestess card, over that which is called the fool, and over the hanged man. For instance, Waith described the secret tradition of Freemason, 
In the secret tradition of Freemasonry, the master mason entering the temple between Boaz and Jachin. The B and the J, guys. These are where the B and the J come from. A lot of people always ask about this. No, it's not blowjob, okay? It is Boaz and Jachin. Jochen, I'm probably saying it wrong, but this is the B and J. And this is um, when what the what the Masonic master must enter to go into the temple. And that's what this was inspired by. And through the veil of palms and pomegranates, just as we see on the high priestess card. So then we have, see, the veil is of pomegranates and palms. And that's a veil that they have to go through. So he was saying according to Arthur Waite, that these three cards, the fool, the hanged man, and the high priestess, he gave her a lot, a lot, a lot of guidance on. What I've heard in some other books, and will probably come up in this, oh, sorry. <sighs> sorry, knocking my whole setup down. Joaquin, no. Um, it's J-A-C-H-I-N. On the fool's tunic are 12 wheels with eight radi, with one wheel also containing the Hebrew letter shin. In the, let's see, there's a fellowship of the rosy cross found in Israel, um, the complete golden dawn system of magic explained. Okay, this is coming from a book. That was a lot to say that this is a quote from a book. I'm going to read the quote now. At the meeting point of the arms in the middle of the cosmic cross is placed the wheel or circle of the spirit having eight radi proceeding from the sacred letter shin. The doctrine of the rosy cross in the grade of adeptus minor is here formulated and symbolized with imitations of mystery mysteries that lie beyond the grade. Okay, wow. I don't know what that, I don't know what that means, guys. We're going to move on. <laughs> Joshin. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Let's see. What else is cool coming in here? Let's see. Any other cool stuff? lots of different things um what i'm going to end up doing of course i'm going to read this and probably do like a little tiktok breakdown of it um Let's see, we'll read this last section here. Oh, we're coming to the end anyway. Okay. Wait and the secret tradition. We can see Pamela's pictorial minor arcana as an ambassador or envoy into the future, a tool for future telling. While yet illustrating timeless echoes of long ago, the myth and legend rather than the actual historical events. The style chosen may be a deliberate reference to the secret tradition of A.E. Waite and Ageless Wisdom of Paul Foster Case. Waite's many books and articles on the secret tradition in alchemy, Freemasonry, Freemasonry, Kabbalah, and the Grail, as well as in Tarot, expounded on a single idea that there exists hidden teachings of the return to unity with the divine. Furthermore, this philosophical belief expressed also in Bavlotsky, Bavlotsky's Secret Doctrine and Joseph Campbell's Monomyth, which is interesting that they're bringing up the Joseph Campbell thing because this is what we've talked about. That's where the whole concept of the Spiro's journey comes from. Um, the hero's journey comes from. Um, okay. Uh, da, da, da. the symbols that we directed Pamela to use in the major arcana with a few of the minor arcana cards point to his belief in the power of those symbols to return the soul to its source. He wrote in the secret trad tradition in Freemasonry that certain high grade orders do carry a second sense in their symbolism of that great experiment, which is at the heart of all true religion, being the way of soul's reintegration with God. Wow, you guys. If you guys watched my ayahuasca videos, isn't that crazy? 
that the way that I said that I experienced this hologram on ayahuasca was it just seemed like a great big experiment inside a petri dish and that we were all going to rejoin back with source through this experiment that's crazy that this is what he's saying here is that all the symbolism that is in these cards a lot of them hold a second meaning a meaning which is giving information to they have a second sense in their symbolism of that great experience experiment which is at the heart of all true religion being the way of the soul's reintegration in god there is no doubt that the tarot was meant to carry such import for the true tarot symbolism it speaks no other language and offers no other signs as weight proclaimed in the pictorial key to the tarot Carl Jung suggested something similar when he wrote in Structure and Dynamics of the Psyche. The psychological mechanism that transforms energy is the symbol. In addition to the images themselves, Pamela left us her legacy of how to read the cards in a 1908 article with the preeminent arts and crafts magazine, The Craftsman. Here are her instructions for viewing a painting also apply to interpreting her cards. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. Have we been doing it the right way according to Pamela Coleman Smith? Let's take one. We'll take a minor arcana card since that was what this was about today. We're going to take this one that was allegedly the Nine of Pentacles, which is allegedly um Ellen Terry, the actress. Okay. This is what Pamela said of how to use her cards and interpret her her readings, her drawings. Note the dress the type of face. See if you can trace the character in the face. Note the pose. First, watch the simple forms of joy, of fear, of sorrow. Look at the position taken by the whole body. After you have found how to tell a simple story, put in more details. Learn from everything. See everything. And above all, feel everything. Find eyes within. Look for the door into the unknown country. This approach is perfectly suited for reading tarot for oneself or for an interactive relationship with a client. Saren's, Sar Susan Wan's mystery novel, Magician and the Fool, features Pamela Coleman Smith. The author writes that Pixie was a free spirit who is remembered because she created and left a pack of cards that have ignited our collective imagination. There's so much more in this book, and of course I will be um, getting more into that, um, but on my own time, and I'll make a TikTok video in it, but that was pretty cool. We found out a couple of cool little tidbits of information today. Um, the most exciting thing that I think was... Um, I really thought it was interesting seeing how they only got one card per initiation and we just get all 78 right off the bat. That was pretty fun. Mmm, yes. So that was good. That was great, guys. Um, as you know, uh, I have my domestic tarot book, uh, my workbook, which you can get on Amazon. Thank you to everybody who's gotten one already. If you did, please write a review. One thing I want to point out to you guys that I created at the end of the book here was this. So this is for the Minor Arcana. If any of you guys have one of my domestic tarot workbooks, make sure when you're doing readings that you flip to the back and do this because this is a really fun part. So like just to say, for example, I'm just going to grab these. These are all my Minor Arcana, but let's just, you know shuffle really quick and just grab just to show you how this would work okay okay this came out oh my favorite ace of pentacles how many books have i written um so i have two workbooks i have my domestic tarot workbook i have my moon book workbook which is for women um tracking their periods and the moon calendar 
And then I have a book that I am working with a publisher that is not a workbook. That's going to be coming out in 2025. I know, still far away, away. but um, that one is a little different. That's memoir. Okay, these are not popping out. I'm just going to grab them. Okay, so look. These are the cards that we're just getting for right now. Um, so what is today's date? So we would do 1, 23, 24. And then look, I have two from Pentacles. So I'm going to put an X on Pentacles. And then I have one of Cups. I'm going to put an X on Cups. And then I have an Ace. So I'm going to put an X under one. I'm gonna put an X under five, and then I'm gonna put an X under three. And now, let's say if I'm practicing my tarot and I'm filling this out for 30 days, if they're consecutive, great. If not, that's fine. That's why I left the date blank there. Then let's say at the end of this, you look and I actually, thank you. I actually don't do tarot readings. Someone just said, I've watched your content forever. How did I not know that you do tarot readings? So I actually don't do tarot readings. I created a workbook to teach people tarot on their own so they can empower themselves and do their own readings. Um, and I have a tarot series. Um, but yes, so I have my tarot workbook, but I don't read as a tarot reader, I mean, I could pull some cards for us, but um, okay. What's I telling you guys? Oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. So then say you continuously, these are the suits, minor arcana, right? So let's say the same suits keep coming up for you. Let's say you keep getting the swords or you keep getting cups, okay? So let's say if cups, these are the things that you might be dealing with. These are the areas of life you might be dealing with. Here's other things, because um, it's more so personal life. Okay, why do cups keep coming up in my readings? And what if cups are not coming up in my readings? So this is something that part of the reason why I created this tarot book, because I was like, I really wanted like a tracker for my stuff, you know? So like say in this case, if you keep getting um at the end you find out that you've gotten ones aces the entire month you've gotten so many aces well then you would also say no don't just go to the suits we're going to go to the numerology of it and ace is the beginnings is new beginnings fresh starts um each one has individual meaning but overall if you're getting ones a lot if you're getting fives a lot if you're getting tens a lot that means you're coming to the completion of your cycle all right guys well this was fun you have a deck but i just like looking at the pictures and don't even try to do readings oh that's totally fine you don't have to do any readings um yeah you don't have to do any readings that's fine you learned that from a mark passio video on tarot i haven't heard of him i'm not sure who he is Mm, the journey of souls books yes if you guys haven't watched my soul series you should okay well there we are guys thank you so much for joining in today for this uh pamela coleman smith untold story we did a little casual tuesday night live no makeup no preparation we just learned on the fly like we would Ah, thank you so much what time do I normally start my lives? Every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And I do it every Tuesday on YouTube. I also usually stream onto TikTok. And um, you guys check the link in my bio if you'd like to come to my lecture this weekend. It's an online lecture with Richard Dolan. Um, a lot of great people are going to be there. There's a lot of people, there's a remote viewing class. I'm gonna be speaking about the sentience of AI. And um, if not, guys, make sure you join my Substack if you haven't. I hope you guys enjoyed the class and the replay of what we did last time, which was a future self meditation. Coming up on February 18th is going to be our next event for paid members. We're going to be doing a past life regression and a future life regression, both in the same using the Dolores Cannon group method. So if you have never done a past life regression, if you're interested in doing more stuff with Dolores Cannon's work, but I know the QHHT sessions are extremely expensive. 
Um, that's not in everybody's budget. So if you kind of just want to explore it, if you're someone who's not even sure if you can be hypnotized, you're better off trying it um in that type of setting and then you have a re recording that you can go back to and practice with um oh it's 3 a.m in uk wow oh thanks brie brie said thanks um said good luck at my lecture thank you so much the sentience of ai i'm i'm live right now on youtube but i'm about to i'm about to get going thank you everybody uh I enjoyed this so much. This was actually really fun um, today. I liked reading these little tidbits and getting like cool little bits of information. Um, there was probably not as condensed with information as we would have hoped, but um, you think your our TVs hypnotize us? Oh, that's for sure. Oh, cool, nice. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And